Richard, and this is the Jays on Show, episode two. Last week's episode was like was like a pilot episode, and today we have a great uh, conversation lined up for y'all. And I have an amazing guest. This is going to be amazing. This is going to be awesome. Uh, what you're talking about today is more on <clears throat> the Constitution, the Constitution, what it means uh, when it talks about the sovereignty of the people, especially in our country right now, Kenya. Do we have the like the, the the rule of the law, and how far does the law go to protect its people, and what kind of what kind of uh, setup has been put in place so that that law is not abused? Because we've seen so far that in our country, a lot of things happen that we think we are not in control over, but we are actually. So that is what we'll be talking about. My guest today is. Jerry Nelson, friend of mine, a lawyer, and he knows what he's talking about. Another thing I'd also like to say is that we should we should be more like people people think critically about things. You know, like for example, when when the BBI showed up, all of us were like, ah, so what do the politicians have to say about it so that we can see if we can support it or not? That should not be our you know our mentality. Our mentality should be, what is this all about? And read the content of what is being presented and make a decision, a logical decision out of what you've read rather than what you're being told. Because what has happened so far is we we are not being told of the content in rallies or with these politicians because they have their own agenda. So if they want it, they will come and tell you, you know, this is why you should vote for it because because I'm, I'm in support of it, rather than like, giving you facts on it, you know. So that is part of the thing that we're going to talk about, and also uh, the different segments that we have. Uh, viewers, my name is Nelson Mandela Vujeri, a young man who is born again, who believes 100% in the power of Christ. As the Bible commands us for you to be born again, you must believe that Christ was resurrected and sits on the right hand of the Father, and so I do. We are going to read from the book of Genesis, chapter 4 and 5, and uh, I'll be ready to take you through, and I start. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Now Adam knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bore Cain, and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Verse 2. Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Verse 3. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought off the first born of his flock and of their and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was angry and and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and, it, and its desire is for you, but should rule over it. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. The Lord, then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? He said, I do not know. Am my brother's keeper? He said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So now you are cast from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your, from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength 
to you. A fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be on earth. And Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Surely you have driven me out this day from the face of the ground. I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on earth. And it will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. And the Lord said to him, Therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark on Cain, Let anyone finding him should kill him. Verse 16. Then Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on, east of, uh, on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch. And, the, and he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. To Enoch was born Irad, and Irad begot Meshujael, and Meshujael begot Meshushael, and Meshushael begot Lamech. And then Lamech took for himself two wives. The name of one was Ada, and the name of the second wife was Zillah. And Adam bore Jabal. He was the father of those who dwell in tents and have livestock. His brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all those who play the harp and flute. And as for Zilan, she also bore Tubal Cain, an, inst an, an instructor of every craftsman in bronze and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Naaman. Then Lamech said to his wife, Ada and Zilan, hear my voice. Wives of Lamech, listen to my speech, for I have killed a man who for I have killed a man for wounding me, even a young man for hurting me. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, then Lamech seventy sevenfold. Verse twenty five And Adam knew his wife again. And she bore a son and named him Seth. For God has appointed another speed for me instead of Abel, who Cain killed. And as for Seth, to him also a son was born, and he named him Enosh. Then men began to call on the name of the Lord. Chapter 5 This is the book of the genealogy of Adam. In the day that God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. He created them male and female, and blessed them, and called them mankind, in the day they were created. And Adam lived one hundred and thirty years, and begot a son in his own likeness, after his image, and named him Seth. After he begot Seth, the days of Adam were eight hundred years, and he had sons and daughters. So all the days that Adam lived were, lived were 990 years and 30 years, and he died. Seth lived 105 years. He begot Enosh. After he begot Enosh, Seth lived 807 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Seth were 912 years, and he died. Enosh lived... Ninety years and begot Canaan. After he begot Canaan, Enosh lived eight hundred and fifteen years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enosh were nine hundred five years and he died. Canaan lived seventy years and he begot Mahalalel. After he begot Mahalalel, Cain lived eight hundred forty years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Cain were 910 years. He died. Mahalalel lived 65 years, and he begot Jared. After he begot Jared, Mahalalel lived 830 years, and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Mahalalel were 895 years, and he died. Jared lived... 132 years, and he begot Enosh. After he begot Enosh, Jared lived 800 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Jared were 962 years, and he died. 
Enoch lived 65 years and he begot Methuselah. After he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. Methuselah lived 187 years. He, uh, he, he begot Lamech. After he begot Lamech, Methuselah lived 782 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Methuselah were 969 years and he died. Lamech lived 182 years and had a son. And he called his son Noah, saying, This one will comfort us concerning our work and the toil of our hands, because of the ground which the Lord has cast. After he begot Noah, Lamech lived 595 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Lamech were 777 years, and he died. And Noah was 500 years old. And Noah begot Shem, Ham, and Japheth. May the Lord bless the world. Wow. Episode 2. Welcome, guys. My name is J. Richard, and this is the Jason Show. Today, I have a very special guest, a very special friend of mine. Uh, we go way back, but you'll get to know that when we start talking. But uh, the reason why I had him come off is because I've always wanted to have him uh, just sit down and have conversations about things that actually matter. Things that, number one, he's a uh, professional on things that he understands because he's going to school to learn about them. Uh, so, uh, uh, welcome. Thank Jerry. you so much. Uh, I'll give you the pleasure of introducing yourself because I do a very terrible job of introducing people. All right. So, uh, yeah, so. Ladies and gentlemen, I respond to Nelson Mandela Bujeri. Yes. I'm a lawyer by profession. Yes. And a political commentator. Yes. Thank you for having me on the show. <laughs> <laughs> political commentators guys you thought we were, we were like joking on this show we are very serious so um, uh jerry mandela is, is is a personal friend of mine all right and i had him over and we're just going to talk we're just going to like discuss things that matter things that are important mm -hmm. both to me to him and probably to the future of our country yeah, right. to the future of young people yes so welcome thank you uh we i i think i think i'll be in order to say that we knew each other from back then when you were in high school yeah we've known each other way back yes. from high school yeah. you know probably in high school nobody mm. could uh, believe me that i'll be a lawyer even well uh, i could believe it yeah uh, my desk <laughs> must be cold and because of some mix and you know some subject you tend to think are like, yeah, like you want to become a lawyer yeah, where exactly. do you come from and yeah. uh, at that time i wasn't from a place where you could comfortably say i'll yeah. probably say this I'll is what make i wanted it, to do yeah or i'll make it even to campus yeah yeah uh, because probably the environment you mm. live in, nobody ever uh, makes it beyond high school beyond and all that. School, yeah. So it was kind of a joke, but I was determined to take it. Mm. And uh, here we are. Is we that what like, you, you, you wanted to be ever oh, since? Oh, like, yes. Yeah. When I was young, yeah. I, was, I, I used to look up to people like the late Mutula Kilonzo, rest mm. his soul, mm. uh, Mother Karua, Gitobi Manyara, mm. uh, Paul Mwite, yeah. and Professor Tom Ogenda. Uh -huh. And uh, when I was young, I didn't know the difference between a lawyer, an advocate, yes. and an attorney general. So yes. I used to tell my dad, yeah. I want to be an attorney general. So I, I never knew there was a difference between a lawyer, an <laughs> yes. advocate, and an attorney, yeah, general. attorney general. So I just I grew up knowing that Mutulia Kilonzo, Martha Karua, Gitobi Manyara, Paul Mwite, mm. Professor Tom Ogenda, they were all attorney mm. generals. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> So, so at some, po yes, at some point then, yeah. uh, in the process, I came to realize, oh, yeah, you become a lawyer. Yeah become an advocate, mm -hmm. then you can become an attorney general yeah. who is the state council, yes. yeah, who is the advice of the president, the president. then there is also yeah. a chief justice who is uh -huh. the president of the Supreme Court. Yeah. And uh, it became clear and I'm happy. Do you, that, do you think that you are on that path towards that? Uh, right yes, now? Yes, I can't. Uh, or you're like, I'm, well, I'm just good being a lawyer. Um, no, yeah. but uh, all of us, we look up to... Yeah, get, exactly, getting yeah. to the other level yeah, yeah? Mm. You, you can become a chief justice you can be, become an attorney general yes. or still you can become the president, president of the country, of the you country know? Yes, yeah. the attorney general advises the president the yes. chief justice the president of the supreme court of kenya yes. but i can equally be a president being the president of the republic oh my goodness yeah so <laughs> nothing is limited <laughs> exactly yeah. yes. um that is the reason actually i brought this do you know what this is yes i know this is, we call it a governor yes yes let me 
Let me show it to the guys. Yes. <laughs> this one I brought from uh, Pastor Bobby. Yes. Pastor Bobby was here last week. Yes. Uh, I just, well, you know, you know, for the sake of it. Yes. I mean, yes. I can do whatever it is that I want. This yes. <laughs> <laughs> you want to tell me order? Yeah, order. order yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially <laughs> if you see Kikua Moto Sana, you'll be hearing yeah, like uh, me. Uh, at least you have out. a gavel and not yeah. a fire extinguisher. <laughs> and I'm um, used to this when I know it is. I yeah, when somebody like does this, yes. what does it mean in Everything court? Everything should stop. The judge should be the only one addressing the court. Ah, oh my goodness. Yeah. I love that. So I everything love that and uh, love everybody that should be seated. Yes. The judge or the magistrate should be the only one addressing the court. So when like they say order, order, order that means, everybody... it means somebody is out of order. Yes. And probably there is some of chaotic environment. Yes. And if they say order and you continue, then you are taken in for contempt of court. We only see that in movies or in series, yes, or, is, can, or is it just me, JK? You, you can be a uh, you see it in movies, you see it every day yeah. in practice. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'd like I'd like us to get it into something that is interesting to me. Yes. Uh, just to get some backstory f- to where we are, because if you want to know, you know, where you're headed, yes. it's very important for you to look back yes. in history, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I know your profession uh, yes. requires you to be... Uh, conversant with the law and the constitution yes most importantly the constitution yes uh i'd like us to to you know address this and you can give us a, a little bit of a backstory yes. on the history of our constitution right. especially like the first constitution that we had yes uh, before like we got now the you know uh, all right the, the all new right constitution now um in 1963 we had what we always call the independent constitution mm. in 1963 that had established a bicameral uh, structure of government by coming or having the Senate and the National Assembly just the, 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 the like the one we have right now yes. establishing the two houses of Parliament mm. the Senate and the National Assembly mm-hmm. the Parliament what we normally call the Parliament mm. although the all the two houses are called Parliament houses yes. of Parliament mm. then in 1964 we became a Republic you remember and mm. uh, we amended the Constitution to make it a uh, not a bicameral house, mm-hmm. then we only retain the National Assembly yes. when uh, Mze Jomo Kenyatta was the Prime Minister. Mm. So that was the independent constitution that try, tried to set out the independent, uh, the leader. It was mo- mo- more or less structured mm-hmm. to favor the colonial rule oh, yeah. because we only had the Prime Minister and having the Queen of England, the Governor General, and all that. Mm. And then 1967, the same was amended. That was the first time the constitution was amended. 19 mm-hmm. Uh, 1969. Yes. The what was the amendment, amendment about? The amendment was about... Uh, I'll say greed, because <laughs> at that point is when the Jomo Kenyatta came in and he made sure that we had a presidential system of governance where the president held full, uh, had full had powers. Full power. So he didn't want I to see. have a position of a prime minister because he probably thought uh, the likes of Jaramogi will come in and start causing chaos the way uh, uh, Raila Odinga the... has been causing chaos to uh, Uhuru Kenyatta <laughs> until yes. the handshake. So the, pre- the then president yeah. uh, Jomo Kenyatta had mm. to make sure the constitution was amended. Mm-hmm. Completely yes. to give him full power, full power so that he was fully He's in charge. He's the one calling yes. the shots. Yes. And I, uh, I remember that is when he came and although he did, he wasn't so much ready for it mm. until 1978 when he died and then uh, Moy took over. Mm. And we all remember in this country, Moy was the most powerful president yes. we ever had. Yes. Who could come here in Nakuru at uh, Car Nation and fire. Uh, um, a minister just like that and appoint another vice president like uh, Judge Saitoti yes. on the road and yes. nobody will do nothing. Yeah, do He could call people, whip people yeah. the way he liked. Yes. Yeah, and then you was remember that, was that though like in the constitution it, the powers that he had? Yes, or, it was in the constitution. I remember we had a one party state yes. before the repealing of section 2A. Mm. Yeah. So we had the president who amended the constitution in 1969 and made Kenya a one-party state that Kanu must rule. If you are not in Kanu, then you are not supposed to be in government. Yeah. So that was the position the position he took so that he could make the, the country to be a one-party state so mm. that the president could have full powers. Full powers. Yeah. You oversight the opposition, you thwart the opposition so that nobody comes to question you. Mm. Right? And then we came and then now uh, the pressure mounted. We had to repeal Section 2A of the 1969 Constitution, 82A mm. of the 1962 Constitution, and uh, we made it a multi party democracy in yes. Kenya in yes. 202. And then Kibaki came in, we had NAC, we had uh, Ford Kenya, yes. we had all these parties coming in to yes. fight. And then the President Kibaki became the first president with NAC after breaking from Kano. Mm. So that was the 
beginning of a redemption of the country mm. towards the multi-party democracy. Mm. And then, do you think, yes. before you, we get to the multi-party, yes. do you think there was anything good that could come out of a one-party state? There's nothing good. Because <laughs> like nothing even the very the current constitution, the result we call Article 10, says the principles of good governance, uh -huh. multi-party democracy is yes. part of it. Because mm. every person must have their right the, the position that to stand and choose between this person and this person. Because when you have a single state, yes. and then you have a Kanu candidate going against a Kanu candidate mm -hmm. along a uh, voting system, and yes. then one person has a long queue after having paid people in the night, or people queuing <laughs> knowing that if you see me queuing here, yes. I'll, my head will be yes, thrown in exactly. a paper bag somewhere. Yeah. There was nothing from a one-party state. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we had just had to move on towards having a good democracy because mm -hmm. even in the u.s yes. we have several parties but you know the republicans and the democrats mm -hmm. yeah? but we had to come where we are right now so mm -hmm. that if i'll not form government i'll be in the opposition mm -hmm. but the opposition like the way bba is tending to propose we'll mm -hmm. have an official uh, opposition leader wow so that if i buy on odm and i don't make it and somebody from uh, tna or yeah. jubilee makes it the person in odm will have his numbers. Yes. Yeah. You remember before the 2010 concern, we used to have Kalonzo running for presidency, mm -hmm. Raila running for presidency, yes. and then Kibaki running for president mm -hmm. 207. Mm -hmm. Kibaki gets uh, 3 million votes. Yes. Raila gets uh, 2.9 2, 2. million, mm -hmm. and then Kalonzo gets 1 million. Mm. If you see the people who voted for Kalonzo and Raila, they are mm. over 5 million, but the people who voted for Kibaki are 3 million, <laughs> but he's the president. It doesn't make sense. So the majority rejected him, and yes. that's why the new question <laughs> tends to propose 50 plus 1. Yes. So that if Uru Kenyatta gets 50 plus 1 votes, uh -huh. it means the rest of the presidential candidates, they got less than 49%. Exactly, yeah, so yeah. the majority are with this person. Because Unlike, it doesn't make sense. It does not if, make if, sense. If 60% 60, 60 votes for these two yes. people, and then... 40% votes for this person. So he's the president because he voted by less people. Yeah, yeah so it was uh, kind of... Uh, a rule that nobody sh we should frown at mm. because we'll ha end up having a pre you remember two or seven Kibaki had a rough time yes uh, in the national assembly even mm. Ababu Namamba went to parliament and saw with Raila Odinga's name mm. as the president mm. and nothing could have could happen to him because yeah, exactly, they commanded yeah, yeah. the majority yeah. in the national assembly mm. yeah they commanded the majority outside here and that's why Baba could say to Kutane IBC and I was there in the morning yes. and uh, despite <laughs> the fact that I was just out uh, was there, from primary <laughs> and uh, I could go there to Nakula Siwaji Pamoja to Nakula yeah because we are the majority, we yeah. know Baba is our leader. Yeah. We rejected into, Kibaki. In two, in two or seven, you are, you are, you are, you are like. Um... I was just at Arabe Culture. I, was, I started causing trouble a long time ago, so <laughs> I'm just still growing. Yeah? yeah. So it is. It was very important yes. that we have multi-party democracy yes. where people can have majority can have their say their way but the minority should also have their say That's yeah right. we must be listening yeah, yeah, to i love that i love yes. that say, say that again the majority having their way mm -hmm. but the minority having the Say having a say, yeah. but their say must be considered to some be extent. Considered, yes. Yeah, that's true. And uh, and that's why we are saying even this BBA. I know you'll get there. Yes, yeah. When we yeah. say public participation, people must be acquainted with the knowledge. What is this BBI? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Why? why what is this? What is it all about? What yes. is inside there? Yes. Yeah. What is inside there? Why do we need public participation? Why mm. should it go to the counties? Why should it come to the national assembly and then go to the senate? Why should it be subjected to a referendum? Should we have a multiple question referendum or just a yes and no referendum? Yes. You know that's the debate that people don't understand. Mm. So. Most people are waiting for Ruto. What will Ruto say? What will Ruto yes. say? If, if, yeah. if Ruto says this, yes. then we are, yes. we are, then we are going to oppose, uh, regardless of what is contained in that document. So yes. it's important that our people get to know. So, getting back to our uh, the reason why yes. we did a multi party, yeah. mm -hmm. we actually needed multi party for every mature democracy mm -hmm. across the world. Mm -hmm. They equally need to have several parties having clear democracy that mm -hmm. people having choices to make yes we have five people here five different parties mm. take what you think will suit yourself will suit you better, yes. yeah. so that is the basic yes. need why we should have multi-party democracy mm. that people must have variety to choose from because a country is made of people yes 
and uh, it's important that those people yes. say what happens exactly to them. and you know yeah. article one of the question gives people the sovereign power yes, the sovereign, it says yeah. we the people we the people so without yes. us the people mm. even the question doesn't you know we, we the people there's breathe. no nation you know we people. say the question is a living document yes. with the heart and soul mm-hmm. and it's upon us to it's breathe life mm. into the question so it says we the people mm. article one mm. so it gives all this power to the people we can even recall the president yes. we we the people send the members of parliament to parliament to represent yes. us yes. without us those people should not be in those positions yes. so it give us the mandate to be the supreme the other sovereign of the country yes. so that every other thing trickles down to us yes. if it's not in our interest then it should not exist it should if not it's exist. not in our interest mm. it should not pass yes that is interesting because the place where we've gotten right now is yes. more like the opposite. Yes. It's more about the people. Yes. The people who are in power, in power than, than the, the people, people who have the them, power. Exactly who have yes. the power. Yes. 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 Now you see, uh, that is that is uh, unfortunately that is where we are right now. Is it a mindset that the people have, or the mindset that the people in power has made the people to have? Yes. For us in Africa, we tend to intoxicate all these people with power. When somebody becomes an MP or a member of county assembly, it's an opportunity for them to loot. Mm. Everybody wants to be in public service. You know, in developed countries, first world yes. countries, people who are rich, the richest people are not in politics. That's true. Yeah. yeah. People who are in private businesses are the richest in the developed world. But mm. in Africa, the richest people are in politics. So if you want to get rich quickly in Africa, you join politics. You come, give people a few coins here and there, get into power, promises, loot yeah. everything. Mm. Be comfortable. Then quit or people will reject you. They vote for another thief probably a lesser one or the one who will give them something better before it who takes. Who promise them something yes. better. Yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, that is the position. But uh, from where we are, even in the BBI, the position is, they're saying the main reason why every governor is pushing for this thing, every MC, MC they've been given car grant for $2 billion. So order, for them, order, the order, interest... Order, 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 order. Sorry, say that again. The MCs, they have already been given. The SRC already approved the two million car grants. So for them, they can vote for BBI because they have something they've been given. Governors are serving the second term. They are supporting BBI simply because BBI established what we call regional governments, mm. regional kings. So we'll have Western region, Nyanza region, Coast region, Central region, Northeastern, and uh, Eastern. The, Kambani, the, the larger Kambani region. So governors are serving the second term. They're supporting BBI because they know in, inside BBI, they're going to be regional kings. Hmm. Equally, members of uh, National Assembly, yes. most of them will support BBI because, number one, BBI is going to give, make extra constituencies. Yes. So when they make extra constituencies, if you know in the previous election, you just won by a, a slight margin, probably 2,000 votes, and my concern is going divide, to be divided by two. At least I'll be comfortable this side, and you, my biggest competitor, go to the other constituency. Mm. So there is an aspect of job security here. Yes. For me, I've been promised an extra constituency where I live. Let me wow. take it. Yeah. There is also another a promise of uh, the prime minister, the deputy, and the two deputy prime ministers. Yes. These people will come from the national assembly. So there are some MPs who are sure that I must be as loyal as I can to the party leader mm-hmm. because in return, I my name yes, yes, yeah. will be suggested the people who will become the deputy prime ministers. We equally have the proposal that we'll have uh, cabinet secretaries. Eh? The ministers will come from both the National Assembly and the technocrats. So we'll have uh, ministers sitting in the National Assembly answering to questions mm. in the National Assembly. Yeah. So if there is anything to do with devolution, have Minister for Devolution sitting in the National Assembly. If there is a question on devolution, county hospital or this devolved health function or any other function, the Minister will be in the National Assembly answering questions. So the Minister will definitely come from the members of the National Assembly who have been elected. So all these MPs are looking around and skimming and trying to see, I stand a chance of becoming a Prime Minister, yes. I, stand I stand a chance, a chance of, of becoming of, yeah. a Deputy Prime Minister, I stand a chance of becoming a Minister. So all these things, they trickle down to self-interest. This is sickening. Where is Mwananchi now? 30, 35% to the, national, to the county. Current 15%. Can you see it? How has it helped that Mwananchi in that county to say, for the 15% we've been receiving since 2010, August 2010, uh, the new constitutional dispensation, mm-hmm. we've been receiving 15%. There's a road, there is a hospital, there is an ECD class because ECD is developed function. Yes. There are some county roads that have been tarmacked or developed or graded. 
if somebody can be able to point and say in my county i think if we get 35% yes. it is going to improve what 15% has done yes but it's most unlikely especially where i come from i'm going to bring the house to order we'll be right back all right welcome back wow uh Today, my guest is a very interesting one. Uh, that is why you don't hear me talking so much, because this guy knows what he's talking about. I don't even need to talk by there. I just need to ask a question and just sit there and listen. I, I didn't know about so many of these things. Uh, and that is why I, I brought him to come uh, help me figure this out. Uh, next time, I think I'll come up. I'll come with a notebook or something else. Um, I'd, I'd like us to go back to the new constitution. When we got the new constitution, yes. uh, what was the main reason why yes. and how was it how has it been ever since yes. did you get what you wanted right. or what happened in between all right now uh, you know the question is not cast in stone mm. it is subject to amendments even yes. article 257 provides that this question shall be amended in the event of one two three it mm. gives grounds for amendment of mm. the same mm. but uh, the question should be uh, you are terming it as the new constitution why should we be amending a new constitution <laughs> In fact, yes. how 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 do we amend? How soon do we amend it? Because before even the constitution yes. was passed, yes. we we're like we need to amend it. We like we need to to oh. to add or remove this and yes. this. Yeah. Or uh, probably you should be asking when should we stop terming it as a new constitution? As because new constitution. we are going to amend it in the next probably six or so months, and uh, so it's already old. It's ten years old uh, as uh, right now. Yes. It's ten years and. Uh, it provides for mechanism of amending it. It's yes. not cast in stone, and uh, you know when you make the. How soon can you amend the constitution before you even get? Even further? the following day, there is no timeline. <laughs> if you have a new constitution today and then tomorrow you feel like no, there is something you missed out. Yes. The law allows you. Yes. There is no time frame as to which uh, when the constitution should be amended. Yes. Yeah, you know you cannot say this constitution shall be amended after ten years. Yes. Or, no. It says at least if, we live with the consequences if, of what yes, you got. Yes, so, uh, for like ten years yes. before. So right now we can have a BBI. We have a, is the BBI an amendment of the constitution, yes. or is it uh, is it something that stands on its own besides right. the constitution? All right, right. All right. Now uh, BBI. Yes. The, 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 right now it's no longer called BBI. It's called Constitutional Amendment 2020. Constitutional Amendment 2020. It means it comes to change the current constitution this year, 20, from last year towards June this year. They'll have be, they'll be, you know. It will the, be part the, of the constitution. Yes. When you amend, for you to have a referendum amend the constitution, anything touching on the structure of government, mm. the presidency, the vice president, uh -huh. the prime minister, uh -huh. we are going to change all that. And that calls for a referendum. So the question should be. Do we feel like the current constitution has served enough and we've, we've had enough of lacunas to the yes. extent that we should change? We should change it. The question is true. Mm. We should change the current constitution, but the timing could be wrong. Mm. First, you are there grounds for the change that they're proposing? Number yes, one? yes, there are grounds. Okay. First, things that uh, should make the current constitution be changed. Number one, it heads uh, a lacuna when it comes to, you remember what happened in Nairobi County, when the deputy governor resigned yes and yes, the yes, governor yeah. could not yes appoint although he, uh, he is supposed to appoint a deputy governor deputy he did not yeah. appoint yes. because there was no provision in law as to when a governor fails to appoint a deputy governor what, what happens? happens okay yeah that was we didn't see that coming. yes we we're like i think these guys can handle their country and, and that's why i say and that's why i said we can have a, a new question through the bbi mm -hmm. By June, and then we realize uh, September, there is something left out. There is nothing that bars us from changing it. Yes. Yeah. We can change it even the following day and say we forgot to include this. Yes. But we want to change this next week. Number two. So when it comes to the governance, yes. according to your to your assessment, because yes. you you are you are professional in this area. Yes. When it comes to the governance structures yes. of this country, yes. the constitution has grounds for change right now. Yes. There is need for change. There's there need is for need an amendment. for change. Yes. Yes. Okay. So was that was that the was that the backbone of the BBI or that was part? No, uh, BBI was a selfish interest between two people that they've never disclosed to anybody to date. So they wait, tried wait, to wait, bring wait. in all these order, other things. Order, order. <laughs> I'm trying to get and understand this. Wait, so the the constitutional amendment yes. that we have right now, yes. 
that includes the governance yeah. structure that yeah. we just talked about. Yeah. Like for example, you know, yes. the governor yes. when he does this and this yes. and this and this and this, they are all provided for in the in the BBI that is being proposed right now. Yes. But that was not the point. Yes. The handshake between two these uh, these two brothers, Raila and uh, Uhuru, <laughs> two brothers. <laughs> it was not meant to change the constitution. It was introduced later when we started asking questions because even to date, if Uhuru is having an interview or Baba is having an interview and they ask them what was the, the essence, about, what yeah. was the, the <laughs> what, what happened? They say you nobody uh, this was an argument between two people, two people that remains to be with the two people. So why are we being involved right now? Yeah. So they introduced <laughs> so all why these. Are we being involved? They introduced. We... They only realized that yes. we're asking so many questions. They probably there is nothing behind the handshake. Yes. Yeah. It was just to bring peace and all that. But when they started asking questions, they didn't have anything to tell us. Uh, yeah. They decided now let's tell these people. Let's give them something tangible. Yeah. Let's give them something tangible and give them something to discuss so that they feel like this they thing will clear. be for posterity. This and 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 also to 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 make us think that this thing was 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 a structured thing yes. it, it was like a big thing which, happening behind the scenes which was not yeah because uh we've had people going to court and questioning the constitutionality of the building bridges initiative yes initially we had the nine point agenda the mm. national ethos from the nation of blood ties yes to, yes i saw that in the media and all that the, the national ethos. yes I, I thought that was a joke number yes. one so when we also had uh, many questions yes. they decided now let's do this let's go collecting views Mm-hmm. and get to know what has been ailing this country. We get to know what to do and what not to do towards the next general election. They did have the constitutional uh, amendments in place at yes. that time. Yeah. But when they went down and collecting views and the shelf life for this particular handshake, you know you cannot cele- be celebrating a handshake between two people for three years. So they realize <laughs> this thing, the shelf life is expiring. Yeah. What do we do? Let's make it more vibrant. Let's uh-huh. form a task force. You remember yes. the task force? Task force the yeah. first time expired, it was renewed yes we went to bombers of kenya we learned the document it felt like no we've learned the document but yes. people are still complaining here and there let them go and add, add some something stuff something yeah else. even right now if you say this and this they'll tell you don't worry it can still be added by who if it's a, a question of, um, an amendment we can collect views public participation yes public participation which by the way yes. we're going to talk about yes. as you are, as you are, as we talked about this earlier before we started the interview yes. you were telling me about uh, the participation that uh, you were in yes. when it came to the pro, uh, to the proposal that yes. were that was to be given yes. for the you know for the BBI yes. especially for the young people yes. um, maybe in this can, in this county or yes. in the country at large yes. but they were not factored in yes. to bring the point where yes. this thing is actually uh, it's it's a selfish thing yes. it's it's a selfish ambitious yes. thing yes yeah you know uh we we did give our views uh, like i had told you earlier before we came on set mm. i went I, I proposed in nakuru i proposed in vihiga county and i went to wasingishu i proposed and among the proposal we are raising first was to do the two third gender rule number one you remember the chief justice wrote to the president sometime last year and told the president to dissolve parliament because it had failed to put in place legislation to capture the two-third gender rule. Wait, what? Last year, before uh, sometime in uh, July, the Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya Emeritus, uh, J- uh, Mutunga, not Mutunga Maraga, mm. wrote to the advice the president. Yes. The law uh, 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 requires, the question requires the Chief Justice to write to the president if the parliament will not have put in place legislation to make sure that gender parity and two-third gender rule uh, provision the constitution is adhered to the chief justice is allowed in the constitution to write to the president advising him to dissolve parliament the chief justice wrote to the president advising him that fa- failure of the national assembly to put into place legislation to capture the two ge- third gender rule oh, yes. now mr president proceed and dissolve parliament and you see also another reason why this doesn't make sense this doesn't make sense and i'll tell you why yes if yes. a certain gender yes. does not want to be in power, yes. that means yes. if they do, if they can't get into the runway yes. with everybody else, yes. and the people say yes. we don't want this peaceful yes. or we don't want this particular individual, yes. why should we force it? Yes. it Maybe the constitution yes. or by some legislation yes. that is supposed to be there. Now uh, there is there is what you call equality 
and there is equity. Yes. They're not one and the same thing. Of course. So equality is me vying in Vega County yes. and having a lady opponent and yes. all of us facing uh, the electorates mm. and asking for the votes and letting them choose whoever they'll prefer. Yes. But uh, the current society, it's uh, probably a male society. Yes. Men are having an upper hand when it comes to these political matters yes. and leadership yeah. than women. Yes. And then we introduce, at that point, we introduce the aspect of equity. Yes. You remember, equality is all of us going to face the people yes. and contesting for this position. Whoever yes. wins becomes mm. the member of parliament, whoever loses should proceed home. Yes. But we introduce the aspect <laughs> of equity. Yes. Equity is, for example, you are taller than me. Yes. You can be able to roll this thing standing yes, yes, yes. on the ground. Yes. But for me, being shorter, yes. equity demands that I step on this table so that I get up there and roll this thing. Yes. That is equity. Maybe rolling this thing is just not your thing. <laughs> maybe you should maybe go check something else. Yeah, before we establish that, <laughs> let us try and get to know whether it's my thing or not. Because for us to establish being my thing or not, yes, we yeah. must try it. Yes. Yeah? So equity uh, tends to put somebody who is shorter, elevate them so that from the uh, face value, they are equal. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So that is what the society tends to, to whether well, this two third gender rule mm. tends to introduce. Yes. That uh, women being disadvantaged mm. in the African society, women are supposed to be home, mm. to be home. But, but, but I, think, I think, I think, okay, you, you might take, uh, disagree with me on this, yes. but I just like to understand this. Yes. If at any point we are talking about the sovereignty of the people, yes. and you're very serious about it, you're yes. saying the yes. people have to choose what yes. they want. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. And we live in a society, and we want to cultivate and live in a society of competence yes. rather than a uh, society of power. Yes. Because here is where we don't we draw the line between competence and power. Yes. If, if due to competence, yes. we, we decide we are yes. going to choose. I'm going to choose you, for yes. example, to yes. be my senator. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, out of your competence, yes. like people listen to you, you are a smart person, you yes. can figure this out, yes. you know how to do this, yes. right? And then somebody else comes yes. of the opposite gender, yes. and we are like, I really don't have confidence in this person. Yes. There might be so many reasons why, yes, yes, but yes. because we live in a society where you say it, it is the sovereignty of the people, so yes. we have to choose, yes. right? Yes. Don't you think yes. bringing power into it, yes. that means we have to legislate yes. so that this person can also come in, yes. is going into loggerhead with the, the initial idea of yes. competence and the sovereignty of the people. Because I'm not saying representation yes. is bad, yes. no, but yes. when it comes to places of uh, power yes. and, and things like that, we, you need to let the, so, uh, uh, you know, the sovereign rule of the people, yes. if that is what it's all about. Yes. If you're talking about places where we need participation in terms of, uh, you know, uh, maybe, you know, coming up with the ideas yes. of how we can make the society better yes. and things like that, yes. then mm -hmm. if we decide mm -hmm. that, you know, this gender must be represented in this idea, yes. then they need to be there so that they can voice it out. Yes. This gender also needs to be there so that they can voice it out. Yes. But when we decide mm -hmm. that this is how we are moving, yes. we need to let the sovereignty of the people, you know, no, uh, you know, uh, that is democracy that <laughs> tends to suggest, uh, that provides that people are sovereign yes. in any state. Yes. It's equally democracy that provides for fairness and equality. Yes. And therefore, we can not say people are sovereign and mm -hmm. then we do away with the aspect of principle of equality yes. and fairness. Yes. So if we say people are sovereign and then we end up having a parliament yes. that is male dominated. Mm -hmm. Even right now, yes. there, uh, there's a female governor yes. somewhere, right? Yes. How did the governor got, like, get there? Now, and, and uh, th to some extent, yes. and, and you know, remember, we used to have three uh, women governors, uh, Bo uh, the late Laboso, yes. Charity Ngilu, mm -hmm. and Waiguru, and Waiguru yeah. before uh, Barchok took over the, the, the deputy for Bomet. Yes. These women, they've been celebrated. Do you remember the, Ngilu, yes. uh, I read in history, I was a young then in 202, mm. yes. she gave a shot at the presidency. Yes, yes, And she yes. performed equally well, yeah? Yes, yes. So she's an iron lady of some sort, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. So these are some of the people who've been in the fight yes. all along, yes. from independence, post-independence, second liberation, 2010 constitution, and right now, mm. yeah? Uh, it's only Waiguru who came in the other day, yes. and probably Laboso, mm. but uh, the likes of Charity Ngilu, they've been in this fight for, for long years. Time. Yes. Yeah? Mm. Those are the few women, and uh, that is where you, in history, when mm. history will be written, mm. these women must be captured, being yes. the first female governors mm -hmm. under the 2010 constitution. Mm -hmm. They went out of their way, yes. you know, and that's I told you, this, the current society, for a lady to make it, uh, for any elective position is yes. no mean feat. Mm -hmm. And that's why we celebrate them. Because the African setting, the mm -hmm. African society, mm -hmm. 
the women to some extent yes since it depends they've been disadvantaged yes. you go to some uh, counties uh, those marginalized counties and uh, regions you find women have no say mm. right is women to stay at home is for men to go and work okay. but when they come and uh, try the, their luck and their prowess in mm. matters policy and national leadership mm. these people should be yes. applauded yes. but now also in the, on the ground mm. it is very easy to decampaign a woman that you can decampaign a man yes. and that is the unfairness the society as mm. it is right now mm. and that's why for us to make sure that the, there is equal playing ground level playing ground we must first legislate mm. when we catch up then we can do with the legislation and say now they can go and face each other okay. so you legislate and get these people who've not been able to vote for a woman test what women leadership can do yes if they feel it's nice then you can do with the legislation and i was proposing yeah mm. i i said we cannot be having a woman rep forever mm. because this is what we call affirmative action mm -hmm. affirmative action is supposed to bring you somewhere make give you an advantage then pick it up from there mm. and i was proposing if somebody that, serves, that is exactly my point that is exactly yes. my point because what does legislation do exactly like 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 okay so the fruits of this legislation is yes. if you've had these this affirmative action yes. for this long yes right yes uh, how comes how comes if now they maybe we we're, we're trying to say yes. we're trying to bring the the ground to be level for yes. every single yes. person yes. then at some point you should see the fruit of that yes. in other words yes. we should now see wait now that we've given these people yes. an advantage yes. so that they can be able to be represented yes. are we seeing more women capturing yes. this yes. and getting to the into the playground because yes. of this yes. and uh, to the point where the legislation is is more like a crutch yes. for them yes. than uh, something that actually helps them yes actually that should be the position because we cannot having a position of a woman rep, uh, representative yes. somebody being a woman rep for life mm. yeah because even to that extent it will lose the purpose of us empowering women because yes. this is a single woman mm. who has been in power for all those years yeah being a member you know initially we used have people who have been in public service for the, for life yes. people just want to remain in public service mm. so that they die and get a state funeral yes. yeah we cannot have a woman <laughs> rep so we, oda, oda, oda. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so we cannot have somebody serving as a woman representative for 10 years and then coming to buy for a third term 15 years and then buying what does what is the aspect of empowerment in this all this because you are still in the same position 30 years by virtue of legislation you have exactly improved. that is my point that yes. is my point so, that is my point because if you're looking at if you're looking at the data or yes. or, or at the uh, at the facts yes. the legislation yes and this is what i'm saying yes. Le legislation by the way will do this legislation will not actually give advantage to the women yes will give advantage to the few women yes exactly yes to the few women that are more interested in that yes. but now this is the thing yes. if the women if these women are interested in positions of power yes. and they've been given the legislation for them to get there yes if uh, the main intention of the legislation yes. is to get more women in yes. then we should see that happening yes but if the main intention of the legislation is just to get women there yes. then we're going to have a few women yes. who are more interested in that exactly. position here yeah. and that's why and that's why I, 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 when when these people came here nakuru yeah. i told them for us to get to what we call uh, affirmative action and two third gender rule we cannot be having a woman representative by virtue of the legislation saying that we are disadvantaged and this woman serving in the same position of disadvantage for 10 years for ten, you can go for one year yeah. and then go by for a position that exactly. is yeah. for both male that and makes female sense. that so makes that you sense. leave another person with yeah. disadvantage to yeah. go for this position yes. that is we will be contesting between women but somebody who has served as a woman representative for a single term yes. for five years should have gathered enough courage and tested in, uh, the waters and know for me to vie yes. and compete against men i need one two three because awesome. you, you you find somebody who is a, a woman representative going for position of a governor yes. those are people that you should celebrate i know yes. several yes who are current women members of parliament yes. but they're going for a senatorial position and going for a gubernatorial position those are women that affirmative action is yes. working for awesome but those ones who are going for their third term yes. by virtue yeah. of uh, article 91 of a uh, women uh, members of parliament mm. that it should not be allowed okay. because you cannot be disabled forever and this something like you said mm. you rightly put it crutches yes to help you heal and then be on your feet and move awesome yes. we're going to go on a short break
right. Uh, on the issue of uh, affirmative action and uh, the two third gender rule, I th- I think we're going to dig deep into that mm-hmm. because you've raised very very uh, interesting and important points that people need to know about. But the good thing about this all discussion that we're having right now is you're in a place where you can do something about it. And like you say, you've been proposing this, you've been proposing that. Uh, what is your what is your personal take or your personal assessment as a let's say a lawyer uh, or uh, somebody that has understanding or the BBI especially how it relates to the young people and what is in there is it something that we should throw to the trash or is it something that uh, you know we should pick up and maybe consider now uh, on the BBI you know BBI is a good document a good document you mean like the grammar because I've read it. I, yeah, it has yeah, good English. Gra- you remember the people <laughs> who were selected to chair the panel were the learned, yes. including my senior, uh, Paul Mwangi. Yes. It's a good document. Yes. It has good English. Good. Uh, <laughs> some of the good. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, uh, so uh, it, it is good yeah. from the face value and from what they tell us. But like, <laughs> what like they, wait, 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 what do you mean from what they you tell know, us? You know, these people, the the proponents of BBI, yes. they've not been able to supply all the people who might need. Not everybody has a smartphone in Kenya. Yes, you know, you go to Baringo, you go to my village in Viga, you go to other places, remote areas. Not everybody has a smartphone that can get the soft copy of the same mm. and go through. Yes. Even if they have a smartphone, they might not be understand because probably they feel like it has been uh, put in a legal language yes, or a, yes, a, a exactly little bit yeah, of true, complex true. English. So people are waiting for these rallies that mm-hmm, Babo will what come, this is all about. that Murkomen will come, mm. that uh, Aaron Chariot will come and tell them. Mm. And you know, these are people who will not come and disclose everything to you. These are yes. people who will come and tell you what you want. Them New talking points. Yeah. Want you yes. to hear, to hear, yeah. so that you take a position that is befits them. Yes. You know, this one is just a game of muscles. Yes. If it fails, somebody takes the glory. If it mm-hmm. passes, somebody, somebody else takes, takes the, the glory. glory. It's yeah. not about what money will benefit. Yes. It's about it passing, me taking the glory, or it failing, me still taking the glory. I yeah. I had that on uh, on when the president was talking to in in a certain rally. I think it was yes. in Nairobi. Yes. Uh, in fact, I saw it in your status. Yes, and. The way the dude was talking to to like the people was like, he, number one, he did not value those people at all. Yes. He was like, I love me in Akuja and Nairobi now. I was like, wait, who do who do you think you are? If if they are, if this document is as good as they tell us, they don't have to bribe MCS to pass it. They don't have to be punishing people in the National Assembly and the Senate who try to advise the president that this thing is not famous on the ground. Yes. If it's as good as they are trying to tell us, mm. they don't have. The president ought to have just be a state house and say, this is a good document, let the people read. By virtue that the president has to get out of his official residence to come and address people at Gorogosho mm. and tell them this thing, you'll have to take it like a queen in, whether you like it or not, really and like it's it not a not. vaccine, then there is something you have hidden to wait, like in a that mask. document. Yes. There is something, definitely there is something hidden, wrong yes, in that yes, document. Yeah. Because an if it's a good document... I do write articles and I publish online. Uh, I don't yes. even have to share it. You don't. Because I know there are people who get notification, no, Mandela has published an yes, article, yes, yes. or there's a pub- an article by yes, Mandela on yes. uh, the Standard yes. newspaper on yes. Wednesday. Yes. They'll go by the newspaper and, and read, read it. Yes. Because they know Mandela will be talking about this thing. Exactly. No controversial, yes, but there yes. is sense in it. Yes, yes. But, but, but they virtually have to write an article, and then yes. go buying newspaper, taking to people's offices, <laughs> read my article. Yes. It means it doesn't make sense. <laughs> You get the point. So if this document is as good as they're trying to tell us, yes. then they ought not to come and try to persuade people. They not ought to come and use state machinery, mm. the police, the DPP, to try and charge those people who are having contrary opinion. Yes. But now, the level for public participation in this whole thing is, we are past that, right? We are not past that. Okay. In fact, yes. let me read you Article 10 of the Kenyan Constitution. What the principle of good governance, yeah? If you are talking about governance, <laughs> let me let me just. This is what to do when you have like uh, Bible study sessions. You're like, where's, let me read you Genesis chapter three. Yes. This guy is like, let me read your article. <laughs> let me read you what the principle of good governance is, yes. and tell me what if that is what you experience in this country for right now. Yeah. Yes. You should yeah. like be carrying. You know, like how we carry like uh, hard copy Bibles. You should like no, carry like I, hard I, copy. I, I, I have it here, <laughs> but for avoidance of doubt. Eh? Okay. For avoidance of doubt, yes. let, let me just. Uh, 
take it for you. Yes. Before you get that. Yes. You you say the level for for public participation is not is is not, we are not past that, right? We are not past that stage yes. yet. Uh -huh. Because what what is supposed to happen a referendum process mm. under article 257 mm. you collect the signatures. Yes. That is what is happening right yes, now. Yes, so mm. at least 1 million signatures mm. so that it means it means a, a million people have endorsed yes. the referendum question mm. or the, the case for referendum. Then you take uh, you reframe the referendum bill mm. and take it to the county assemblies. Yes. For the 47 counties to discuss mm. and approve. Mm. I say discuss Discuss. What the current county assemblies are doing, they're only they are approving. Passing, yes. They're they not discussing approving, yeah. because the law requires that they discuss, yes. then approve it. Mm. We have 47, so you must get at least 50 plus one. So mm. if you get 24 counties, you are way uh, better. Yes. And then you take it to the national assembly. Right now, we have 11 counties that have passed. The... Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Now uh, I was to read uh, Article 10. Yes. The national values and principles of good governance exposed in Article 10 of the Kenya Constitution are patriotism, national unity, sharing and devolution of power, the rule of law, democracy, and participation of the people, human dignity, equality, social justice, inclusiveness, equity. Remember, we yes. talked about equity, equity and yeah. equality. Yeah? Mm. Equity, human rights, and non-discrimination. Mm. All this, rule of law in Kenya, there's no rule of law. Yes. If we were to discuss anything concerning this government, uh, this country having rule of law, Miguna Miguna should be in this country. That's true. Because he has the highest number of court orders that any person in Kenya has ever had. Yeah, allowing him to come back. Yes. Yeah. Patriotism for us, you know, we are not patriotic. You are either. The ones who are patriotic are in Canada. Yeah, the, the ones who are patriotic, they're like Mwenenza. <laughs> and Mwenenza, who is a dual citizen of Kenya and the US, yes. is an ambassador in yes. South Korea something that is totally against the law yeah you cannot have dual citizenship and be an ambassador of any of the countries because in case it of conflict, exactly exactly in case that, of that conflict is conflict of, between, of interest. Interest, between kenya if there is anything how did between, that happen no this is Uru kenyatta it always happens he's a mess <laughs> he's an organized mess <laughs> yeah. anything is possible with this guy yes he yes. is an order <laughs> I've always said, uh, and I've been on record several years, that this, the current government is an organized mess. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah, a mess that is organized. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah your Facebook page is a, is a testament to that. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I tell them facts, yeah. and yeah. Uh, every day I walk with the cash bill in my yes. in my pocket. <laughs> I know, case, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah. my lawyer always always has the instruction. The lawyer was yeah. the lawyer. Yeah. You know. If I'll ever flash you, and then you call twice, I don't pick. Come to a police station near. <laughs> And just find out <laughs> what has happened. Yeah? Or you call your lawyer. Yes, uh, my lawyer, he has instructions. Yes. I pay him retainer. There's yes. what you call retainer fee. Just in case I be arrested and he's at uh, addressing court, yes. if I call him, he should give me first priority. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I, I'm a troubleshooter, but I'm a Yeah. Yes. So um, when we say participation of the people, yes. This referendum bill, mm. after going through the county assemblies, which is right now, yes, is where it is, yes. and almost I, at, at the point we are talking about right right now, it's almost like eleven, 11 counties. Approved, so we yes, still have approved. like uh, thirteen, mm. yes. and then this thing will be done, mm. taken to the national assembly for discussion, taken to the senate, yes. and then the referendum question will be framed. Mm. Then IBC will have 60, 90 days. Mm. We go for a referendum. Okay. In these 90 days, we're going to have what we call public participation. Okay. Yeah, we're having, if we at all we have a contested referendum, those leading no will have to come to us mm. or go to Monanchi and tell them the reason why we want you to vote no is because of one, oh, two, two, three. three yes. Those who are proponents will come and tell you the reason why I want to endorse this thing is because of one, two, three. Yes. Yeah. And uh, at, at that point, uh, public participation, people are not, it's not supposed to be a rally people coming to insult each other. Yes. It's supposed to be a rally for public participation <laughs> coming and saying today... When was the last time a rally happened in Kenya and people talk sense? Yeah, never. Like, like, just show me like one video. There's no, none. There's none. And as I'm telling it's, you, all these things, they know they are going to bulldoze their way because they know they are not doing it the right way. Because yes. if you're doing something the right way, you don't have a reason to be Kizuri worried. Kijuza. Yes. Did I get that right? Yeah. Chajiuza. Oh my goodness. I, I, I was almost there. I was almost there. 
Uh, now, if you cannot speak Swahili, we cannot even address you under Article 10 of patriotism because oh, there is an official language also. Order! <laughs> this is my show. I get to pass whatever it is about the show. Yeah, yes. so I don't know to what test of patriotism we can t- take on you, but I guess you'll pay. Can you yeah. move on, man? Now, <laughs> if uh, uh, these people will be coming to us, yes. they come to Afra, yes. they go to Tananoka in Mombasa, they mm. go to Kisumu uh, mm. Stadium, they go to Eldoret. Uh, Kisumu does not even need. Let me tell you why. There's something called psychophancy yes. that is happening in most places, especially in Kisumu. And the moment Baba says something, yes. there's a phrase in, in law, because yes. I know it, because yes. I come from there. Yes. There's a phrase in law that says, Akia Pingo Baba. Yes. Baba, I don't know, I don't know how, how to oppose. Is. I don't know how yes. to oppose. If Baba says it is good, but me, me, luckily man. I come from Western Kenya. We are we are, we are democratic. Yes. Mugisa Kitui comes, we yes. tell him, okay, you want presidency? Yes. Where could you Tanga? <laughs> Tanga. You want presidency? <laughs> yes. India for wedding committees. Uh-huh. You want presidency? Yes. Where you come from, yeah. anybody yes. can come and can be given anything. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Because even Musali has been trying for all those years, they're telling me we don't think we're doing it enough. Yes. And that's why we vote for, so we have Jubilee members of parliament in Western. Yes. My own member of parliament is from Ford, Kenya. Yes. My governor is ODM. Mm. My senator here is yes. ANC. Yeah. So I come from one of the regions that where I'll tell these people, if you come to Viga mm. County, you'll have to come and explain to my people yes. why you want them to vote yes, yes or why you want them to vote no. Okay. Not just a rally with your uh, fuel guzzlers and telling them uh, to make a tie, serikali, the seri- no, we are not talking about the serikali. We'll mm. talk about seri- It's only 18 months before this serikali goes home. Yes. So okay. tell them you're going to have this document. Yes. We want you to vote yes, because in the next 10 years, if you not have changed, these are the benefits we'll get. We want you to vote no, because if you vote yes in the first day of the implementation, this is what you're going to suffer. Mm. Those, that, those are the things we want to hear mm. when public particip- participation stage yes. comes. Yes. And not all this rhetoric. And yes. I, tell, I told you, we, we started by doing it wrong mm. all the way. Yes. Because the under board. Article 257 of the uh, Amendment of the Constitution, there is no provision for a handshake. People don't have to shake hands for us to change the law. There is no provision of a task force being formed to collect views. Yes. Yeah? Yes. There is no provision... Even, even YouTube does not do that. Yes. There is no provision of if I write, Kangata writing a letter to the people telling them that BBI is not uh, uh, popular in Mount Kenya, being fired. There is yes. no provision that for a constitution to pass, people must be fired. There is no provision. The provision is, c- let the people feel that the current constitution is not well enough, yes. of which we all can feel. Yes. There's some loopholes in this concept mm-hmm. that needs to be changed. Then from that point, yes. then you can start talking about yes. the amendments and yes. things like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd like us to uh, I'd, I'd like us to bring this discussion a close, but we'll continue this, you know, in, in the uh, in the coming weeks yeah. in a different show. Yeah. Uh, but I'd like you to to tell us more specifically yeah. what will be the consequences of passing this yes. new constitutional amendment, yes. the BBI. Yes. Uh, number one, not only now, but yes. for posterity. Yes. All right. Uh, first, to, to start with the positive, if we pass the current constitution, I don't know if it's positive or not, we'll have uh, at least the five biggest tribes will have somebody in the executive. You know, we'll have a president, we'll have a deputy president, we'll have a prime minister and the two deputies. That is one. Number two, we're going to have a bloated uh, parliament. We have additional constituencies that are going to be added and what is going to be pressing for common monarchy is the public wage bill because all these people will have to be paid all these concerns will have to be fined so kenya should be prepared in the event that the bbi passes to pay more in terms of taxes so that the government can be able to run number two uh, the affirmative action thing there is no clear formula that even the current BBI that we are trying to force down our throats provides when it comes to aspect of gender parity and uh, the affirmative action. Nobody has been able to come out clearly and propose what we can be able to do to make sure that what is provided in another measure that none of the gender should be in an elective or appointed position more than two thirds. So there is not even clear provision in this current BBI document that tends to suggest how we're going to solve that uh, mm-hmm. question. So it is still, we might have this one, BBI passing, amending the question, but we we'll still end up having extra legislation. Yes. Mm-hmm. But I suspect they'll add a clause that the parliament shall enact. Uh, so we'll just end up picking people from villages, women from villages, uh, and making them go to the National Assembly of the Senate and having 47 senators, 47 women representatives, and still having 47 nominated members of parliament, which is going to be 
and you know Priority. and you know when it comes to anything to do with appointment this and the governments people who call the shots nominate their girlfriends people call the shots nominate their crushes and all that so if you are from a family that doesn't have somebody who is well and done and beautiful you might not be able to make it to the national assembly <laughs> that is number one number two when it comes to the position of the prime minister some of the benefits uh, that the bbi tends to suggest if you have the prime minister and cabinet secretaries or ministers sitting in the national assembly and answering questions directly is going to bring an aspect of, of accountability you know currently this uh, uh, cas is, they can only be called under article 125 where it says the national assembly shall have power to summon any government official to come and answer queries on matters of uh, expenditure and mm -hmm, everything else mm -hmm. So under special circumstances, that's why you can see Mago has at times being called in the National Assembly to answer a question when the school are going to resume, and Mutai mm -hmm, being mm -hmm, called in the National mm -hmm, Assembly mm -hmm. to answer a question. Yes. yes, but it's only provided for May under Article 127. So mm -hmm. it's not mandatory. May, okay. They just decide who do we call today because they have to take the per diems and take tea. Yes. So they decide today, let's call so and so. <laughs> so that the people may yes. uh, see us working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So having an aspect of them sitting in the National Assembly yes. and answering questions, also yes. having to appoint ministers, uh, technocrats, and yes. also from the National Assembly, mm -hmm. also it's a good aspect because it brings out the aspect of accountability. You all remember what happened to Kimunya must go, yes. the Grand Regency. He yes. was the Minister of Finance then. I'd rather die. Yes, and you remember what happened to Mudavadi when he was the Minister for Finance and the, the Langata Cemetery. Yes, yes. So the National that. Assembly and those members of Parliament can courageously stand and direct questions to them yes. directly. You know, mm -hmm. right now, we ha wait for Itumbi to shoot questions to uh, members of Parliament and then uh, to, to the minister and then they'll respond or somebody will be arrested somewhere. At that time, they'll be sitting there and yes. answering questions. Yes. So in the event that it passed, that is one of the positive things. Number two, uh, regional balances, they're saying we'll be having regional balances. Of course, that does not make sense because of uh, fiscal allocation under Article 202 uh, provides that counties like Turkana, there is what you call equalization fund. Mm. So you cannot tell us equalization is going to come with the BBI with the and the new constitution. Yes. And yet, the current constitution it provides is, that provides. counties that are disadvantaged are given extra cash mm. so that they be at par. Progressively, they develop and be at par with the counties like Nairobi mm. that have already developed. Mm. That does not, has not been happening. Number two, they're saying, uh, number three, they're saying that 35% uh, of the national budget will be taken to the county the current culture provides at least 15 percent so let me ask you if the law says at least 15 percent then you are liberty to even put 35 right yes so there is, there is no point of them telling of the the, the current cost the new uh, bba will propose that 35 percent of allocation be taken to the county the current question provides at least 15 percent so nothing bars you from giving from them 35, 35 yeah. percent in the current question so what that is the, who, who are this nonsense ah uh, we have a lot of people who carry like, like did, did they read the constitution before like they wrote it no, no, they, like, they don't like, read they don't read they they must have something to discuss do they, they have smartphones they have oh. smartphones the problem is they know how to use it <laughs> you know you might be able to afford you can be able to afford but you cannot you might not be able to know the value of it yes. yeah so yeah. they have smartphones they have yes. access to all this sitting in parliament you are uh, among the people called the shots in the government, you should be able to have access to information. Yeah. Yes. So for, right. before I give my closing remarks, yes. I was to say what happens in the event that the BBA yes. doesn't pass. Yes. We stand to lose nothing because we can still amend the the following day. Like I told you, there's no time frame provided under the law yes. that if you fail to change the constitution today, you cannot change it tomorrow. Yes. So if you lose this one, you remember in two or two or two and two yes. or five, the banana and orange, yes. Kibaki lost us some time, and yes. then uh, we mm -hmm. he equally won the yes, following. Exactly. Yeah? Yeah. So. There is nothing. If we lose, we stand nothing to, to lose. lose. If we, we vote now, then we stand nothing to lose because yes. we can still vote can yes still the vote following yes. week. Yes. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. So that is it. And uh, what I'll say is, it is important. Uh, the current, the, I want to talk about the borrowing appetite of this country. Mm. We know the World Bank has approved 261 billion mm. loan mm. for this country, mm. and. Uh, Yes, we know we've been through COVID. The last year was wasted, and the country is trying to catch up and be on its feet again. So, the borrowing is not bad, but Kenyans should be worried. Mm. Yeah, 
the president with borrowing we have uh, over 3 trillion uh, public debt mm -hmm. we owe to this uh, lending uh, uh, IMF and uh, China and uh, all these other countries that are in position to give what I'll tell Kenyans is that they should brace for a tough time ahead in terms of taxes because this PBI must be financed. We are trying to get money to recover from where we stopped before COVID. But also we are trying to add in more things, the referendums and bloated National mm. Assembly and the executive. Mm. So Kenyans should brace themselves for a tough time ahead in the event that BBI passes. Mm. Or still, even, even if it fails to go through, they should equally brace themselves for a tough time because all these debts must be paid. Mm. So in terms of taxes, you remember we, in January, we last, the whole of last year we were doing 14% VAT. January 1st, we went back to 16%. And you remember people, I complain yes, about yes, bread yes, and yes, milk and all these yes. things. So people stop buying fuel bread this day. week, fuel yeah, yeah. Uh, hiked. And you know, you might say the fuel price hiking does not affect me. But you know, for you to get that maize from uh, Kipkaren, they must use fuel to get yes. to Nakuru. For yeah. you to get ev anything that you need in the supermarket, they must use fuel. So that effect trickles down to the least thing that yes. you can buy. Mm. So Kenya should bless themselves for a tough time, mm. but you should not lose hope. Yes. 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 Be, read BBI, mm. make independent decision. Yes. Don't listen to me too much because I equally have my interest. That's why I, but I keep I'll on always make sense. Order. <laughs> but I'm sure if you don't listen to me, read, but you'll definitely agree with me because I always make sense. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you very much, right. Nelson. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching and for joining us today. Uh, yes. Uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk about something that is a bit pertinent and affecting us uh, currently, especially the youth across the world, I'll not say in the country, and uh, it's something to do with the mental health or uh, depression. I have friends who've lost friends. I've personally lost friends. Uh, recently, I lost a friend of mine to depression. And uh, what I want to tell the young generation of this country, the youth, because they, they are the most affected, there is nothing worth dying for. Uh, if there is something that is weighing you down, if there is something that you feel like, like, like you need somebody to open to, there is those avenues. I don't have to know you to help you or save your life. I don't have to, we don't have to be friends for you to come and tell me there is this and this bothering me. But uh, world over, it has been agreed, the best solution for depression is people opening up and getting somebody to share with. As the saying goes, a problem shared is a problem half solved. It is important that if there is anything you're facing that you open up, find a person you can confide in. I know it, some things are shameful um, to share, but it's worth it because if you share and people be in a position to address you, to advise you, you will always speak up. It is important to note that not everybody at the top, not everybody that you admire, had it a smooth way all up. Because I know most thi the, many of the things that lead people into de depression is a career path, probably your friends are making it faster than you or your success are delayed uh, and it's not as promising as probably you had thought or probably you feel like you chose a wrong career or you probably feel like your, uh, your family is not giving you the attention you deserve and you fall into depression please find somebody confide in talk to for me uh, you can get me on all social media platforms and uh, the problem is people find it difficult sharing like i said some information is shameful find, people find it difficult sharing with people they feel like they'll go and leak to other people and that is why people tend to think let me die with my secrets you can get me on all my social media platforms uh, at nelson vujeri on twitter vujeri nelson mandela on facebook and uh, vujeri nelson mandela on instagram Let's open up. If there is an issue, we have mentors. We are here. We read uh, several forums with a, a group called Siki Kenya. Siki Group Kenya. We advise. So, young men, don't die. 
let not that heartbreak take you into a grave let not uh, that financial situation take you down let not your career path sink you into depression open up we can be able to help you where we can and if you cannot we can be able to direct you to people we may deem fit to assist you there is no problem that is unique to you all the thing you're going through many people have gone through it and they survived and they have a victory and testimonies to tell so if you feel like there is something you need to open up to let not uh, depression take you down mental health it's uh, an area of concern everybody's talking about it but not everybody's addressing it but some of us we are coming out to tell you if there is anything you need clarified if there is anything you need advice if there is any assistance you need we may not be in a position to help you but we can be in a position to direct to somebody who might be able to help you therefore open up jr is here jm is here through this media just in box uh, we can give you our contacts we can organize a meetup in this town we travel every day and we can be able to discuss you don't have to be my friend you don't have to be any of their friend you just whoever you are and you'll be watching this open up reach out to us we'll be able to open and if you know of a friend who is uh, depressed and a going difficult situation kindly direct them to us and we'll also equally be able to come in and give advice thank you so much looking forward to interacting with you right I'm the, I'm the one he has called JM. I'm JK. Yeah, oh, oh, this is JK and this is JR. <laughs> it's very important to clear. Yeah, to, clear. to avoid. Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> to avoid confusion. Yes. In closing, I'd like to say if you have any suggestion on how to make this show better, uh, you can leave them on the comment section or you can communicate to us directly through our email or phone numbers uh, and make this show even much more interesting and more informative uh, in pursuit of the truth so that we can be able to present something as Christians, as Christian creatives, as Christian professionals. Uh, we can be able to present something that will outlive us and also you know, for posterity purposes. So, uh, I've been your host, J.R. Richard, and this was the Jason Show. Until next time, grace upon you. For posterity. For, for posterity for purposes. Posterity. You, you find that uh, <laughs> that most of the time, uh, most of these people in the government, yes, they, they are prosterous. <laughs> They are prosterous. You're prosterous. Proposterous. Proposterous. Proposing proposterous things. Yeah, proposing preposterous things. Pro. I have improperly. I have been depending on where this footage comes in. I have been behind the camera. Yes. Or I will be behind the camera. You shall be. I shall be. Yes. Behind the camera. I know I'm filling up the the frame. That is that is the face I want you to remember. Is the most important <laughs> for posterity. Guess what? You never expected it. <laughs> and we are at Skyline Studios. It's been amazing. This place is amazing. Y'all should come to this place. Check it out if you want your, your professional shoot, uh, you know, uh, model shoots, any type of photography needs that you have. You should come here. It's located at Shamut Plaza, fifth floor, Skyline Studios. This is where we are. And shout out to them for giving us this amazing opportunity. Is now behind the camera, but it was me. It was this is Dash. Me. This is Dash. This, this is my CEO. This is my CEO over here, Skyline Studios. Yes, this is the guy. CEO, CEO. CEO.